Hey, what's going on guys? So we're gonna try this again. <laughs> I just uh, cut open this uh, package here. We have a going gear club, uh, but then something happened with my camera. It's on the fritz, so we're gonna try it again. All right. So, I have no idea what's in here. I literally just turned the camera on, just opened it. Ooh! <laughs> Who remembers these? That's old school, I kinda like that. And you know what's kinda sad though? That reminds me of Hell's Army out in Hawaii who passed away years ago. Uh, he had sent me one of those. I have one of these in uh, like a clear. But anyway, if you haven't seen this before, right, we'll start there. This is an impact weapon. All right, so, or force multiplier. So basically hold it like that. And then when you hit something, all the energy in your arm and muscles and stuff go to the fine point here, all right? which multiplies the force. Pretty cool, very old school. This one's Combat Technologies Inc. Made in the USA. It's nice to see that this one's USA made, a lot of them aren't. Very cool. All right, so we got some paperwork, we'll look at that later. We got some decals, love my going gear decals, they're on everything. So we have a Cancept knife, big fan of Cancept. All right, and this one is the Fenrir. Fenrir, F-E-N-R-I-R. Fenrir? I don't know. We'll open that in a second. Then we have a Roybivon. Ooh, I love my Roybivon lights. I don't know if we've had this one. Which, which one is this? Just EDC flashlight? That's what we're calling it? Really? I love this color. This is like a silver, almost like a sand type color. We got the pocket clip, All right, which will pop on right away here. All right, very cool. How's this going on? Right in the middle. So looking like right in the middle. All right, there we go. I had it on the wrong direction. Okay, so there's our little pocket clip. It's blinking, so it might need to be charged out of the box here. No, yes, no, maybe. No, I think it just needs to be charged. All right, so we'll charge that later. And what is this? Ooh, Victorinox. I love me some Victorinox. I, you know, I say old school, because, I mean, people are really into them for a really long time, and you don't hear too many people talk about them all the time, but I'm always a fan. I'm always down to try a new Victorinox model, or even a classic one. So here we have the Hunter XT with pouch and DD box. The Hunter XT. I don't know if I have that one. I do like the uh, little shield on the sheath here. All right. So, no, I don't have this exact one. I do have a version of this with less tools, a little smaller. So it looks like there's a separate little spot in there. I'm not sure what for. Interesting, these uh, riveted. Yes, they are. Thought maybe those are snaps. All right. So main blade, all right, and if you're not familiar with these Victorinoxes, they lock up the opposite direction. So iron locks don't push in, they actually pull out. All right, other side, ooh, that's cool. We have like a rescue serrated hook there. All right, seatbelt cutting and so forth. All right, we have a, a rounded tip, all right, especially if you're doing any kind of, um, you know, EMT cutting open someone's, you know, T-shirt or pants or something to get to a wound so you don't stab them, that would be unfortunate. You want to cause more pain. On that one, you can see the liner pushes in. All right, where's this one? It pulls out. All right, what else do we have in here? Hmm, we have maybe a saw. Yes, it is. So a wood saw, which these are handy. I've used these in other Victorinox models before. And on the back here, we have a Phillips driver, which always works well. And is that it? I think that might be it. All right, I'm back yet again. Another uh, distraction here. Anyway, I was talking about this uh, Victorinox Hunter XT. Very cool knife, right? I do love my Victorinox stuff, so just pretty cool. And actually, we're gonna go ahead and use it to open our camp steps here. All right. So this one, I, I'm not familiar with the name. Although they are a million and one different types of, you know, knife names. So 
There are knives, believe it or not, that I've had uh, or currently have, and I just don't remember what they're called. That's a thing too. So let's see, I'll tell you right away as soon as I see it, if I've had it before. I always like these little pouches that come with these. And no, I've never had this before. In fact, right off the bat, it looks, I mean, I kind of like the design. It almost looks like there's a bolster that's upside down, right? Does this look like a bolster? Like if you didn't see the blade at all, like that's a left-handed knife. Because usually we'll have some kind of, you know, material. So I kind of like the, it's like flip-flops. Very interesting. I like the pocket clip. Overall, I'm, I'm digging it. First try thumb stud. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, I like this one a lot. It's kind of a, I don't know, like an arrowhead shaped blade, <laughs> profile blade. That is actually really cool. I also dig the, uh, what is that, a vulture skull or something for the maker's mark. Let's zoom in, got too much glare going on. That is pretty cool. Some kind of bird skull. And there it is, the Fenrir. Fenrir? Fenrir? <laughs> Fenrir? I don't know. I'm horrible. So Greg Schaub designed this, as you can see on the blade there. And there's the Cancept logo. And there's our blade steel and our model number. So it's a K1034A6 and it's an S35VN. I do dig this kind of reverse look here with the, the kind of titanium on the bottom here. Super cool, really interesting. All right, let's 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 try the uh, front flipper action because clearly it's front flipper and that works for me. Some front flippers are easy to flip out and some I have issues with. This one, there is no issue at all. How about that? Very cool. Huge fan of this, honestly. I, I didn't know what to expect. Brand new model, I've never even seen this. I don't know if this is new or old, but I think it's pretty cool. And it's one of the best parts of having you know, collaboration is I'm going to have to look up Greg now to see uh, what he does. If he has some custom work, other designs, because I think this is pretty neat. Very, very cool. And so many of these different cancepts are frame locks and stuff, so it's nice to see a liner lock. I don't mind liner locks. As long as they're done well, this has no blade play at all. Um, very cool. Of course, we get the, uh, you know, reverse um, scales as well. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I dig it. This one's going to go right into EDC today. So even though I do like the uh, the front flipper here, um, I generally will go right for thumb studs. It's just I have a lifetime of flicking thumb studs, right? So that's what my natural instinct is to do. But of course, when I pull it out, if I remember, I can use that front flipper just the same. So yeah, very, very cool. So awesome con or Cancept, excuse me. Awesome Victorinox and a very cool light. And I do want to charge this one up to see the modes. Actually, let's check this out. See if it says something there. We have some split rings. See our little accessory pack. We have a replacement. It's like charging port. You know, that little rubber cap in there. That's cool. What is this though? This looks like a little plate. Hmm. What is that? A magnet? It I have no now I have to read what this thing is. You guys see this little part here? So like a metal plate, plastic, looks like it clips on. Maybe where the pocket clip clips on? I have no idea. Then we have a, a flat split ring and a standard split ring for the keychain. So wait, let's let's do this. Let's flip that. Take a look at our paperwork here. Because now I got enough. Now I'm curious. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. So here's a breakdown of specs and everything in multiple languages. Where is English? English is over here. All right, so materials, aluminum, titanium, and copper. Oh, okay, so the A3 Pro. I'm confused. Let's look at our paperwork for a second. This is the A3 Pro Gen 4 Marble Gray. So A3 Pro is aluminum. Okay, so this one is an aluminum gray color. All right, so they have multiple versions of this and obviously all the specs for all those different versions. All right, so wait a minute, lock and unlock. So maybe it's uh, actually lock, or locked rather, instead of needs to be charged. So to unlock, five clicks, and let's try it. Flashing. Oh, okay, so it's locked. Wow, that is, that is bright. <laughs> that is very bright against that paper. Okay, so 
we have low, medium, high, turbo. I dig it. Let's try, oh, three. Okay, strobe. So you can guess at a lot of this stuff, but it's always good to read your paperwork. Um, so yeah. So what else do we have here? Oh, so the pocket clip. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, pocket clip itself has a magnetic bar in it. I'm looking for the lights in my hand. So that's what this is. It's a magnetic bar. What do we have? That's metal. Okay, our split rings are metal. So a magnetic bar. It's also trying to hit this because that's also magnetic and that shows on the bottom. So you can actually clip that to the bottom here, which I'm going to do right now. Being held, I suppose. And that's magnetic as well. So that's kind of cool. You could pop that off. I don't know naturally how easy it's going to be to uh, get that off or not. But now you have a magnet clip on the side and a magnetic tail. Uh, so obviously this would be nice for, you know, inside the, I mean, the go-to we all say is under the hood, right? When was the last time you're like pulled over on the side of the road at night and, you know, working on your engine? Probably unlikely. It's just the first thing that pops in our minds. <laughs> We're talking, I always use that as an example, but I'm thinking I've literally done that maybe twice. There was one time that I definitely have done that. I needed a light for my truck when I had my uh, 86 K20. I had to start my truck by using a back scratcher. I even have a video on it where I connected, what was it, the starter or something else. I forget what it was, but I made that connection and I can start the truck from the uh, engine bay because it would not start normally. That was a very unique you know, issue that I had with that particular old Frankenstein truck. Um, and uh, that wasn't obviously good for the starter either, but Anyway, long story short, I've actually done that where I had a flashlight. I needed to use the flashlight at night under the uh, hood in the engine bay because that truck had no no natural uh, lighting under the uh, engine bay. And uh, it worked great. But outside of that, I don't remember last time I've, I've lifted the hood at night and just been like, oh man, this is not magnetic. How am I going to possibly work on my engine now in the middle of the road? But anyway, all right. So that's an interesting accessory. I don't know how well it's on there or not. Not coming off easy by flicking the sides. So even if it got caught on something like in your pocket or keys, I don't think it's gonna come off easily. So eh, interesting. I like it. And then obviously the side, you know, why not? You have a puck lip there anyway. Why not throw a, a little magnet? So that is pretty cool. All right, so definitely digging that. And as far as modes, I think I got all the modes, but let's uh, double check here. All right, so primary modes. Moonlight, low, medium, and high. So yeah, I said low, medium, high, turbo, but it's just, you know, explained differently. And it does not so show strobe on here. So there's the run times. Moonlight is 72 hours on full charge. Low is eight hours, medium's uh, one minute. And then it cuts, I guess, power down for two hours. And then high is one minute and cuts power down for an hour and a half. So, uh, moonlight's a half a lumen, low is 25 lumens, medium is 200, and high is 650. So 650 for a minute, then of course it'll cut power, and uh, you have a pretty decent runtime, especially considering there's a tiny little light. So yeah, this is pretty cool, it is. It's a nice aluminum, it's like a slate grayish. You know, I thought it was kind of sand color, but pretty cool. So two awesome knives and a very cool flashlight. So let's check out the paperwork real quick, see the actual breakdown. So the Cancept would have came with the premium box, which this is. If you got a standard box, you would have just got the uh, other three things, because I'm forgetting the Stinger keychain tool, which is totally classic. All right, pretty cool. And there you go. You can read that there. You can read that there if you want. I'm just curious uh, what they say about this uh, Hunter XT. It says the Hunter XT was specifically designed for serious outdoor enthusiasts. It includes two locking blades, a large plane blade and a gutting blade, uh, which again, I said it was a rescue blade. I suppose, you know, it could be either or. Uh, it also uses a slip joint wood saw. Effortless one hand opening is uh, facilitated by the pair of oval thumb holes on the blades. Uh, a rugged two-tone handles ensures a reliable grip, even in wet conditions. A nylon belt pouch carrying case is also included for easy transport and storage. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. And then the Roy Vivon 650 lumens, USB-C charging, Aurora. Okay, yeah, so I don't know, it says EDC on the side there. I don't think it actually says 
Aurora on here, but that sounded very familiar because I have one of these, an older version that's not aluminum. It's just plastic. That says USB-C, 350 milliamp hours. Got teeny tiny writing on this guy, but I don't see Aurora anywhere. Let's see, I can't really make out that too well. Something about Main China. Again, there's the USB-C. 5 volt, 350 milliamp hour USB. Oh, there we go, Aurora. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of stuff going on with this. So it does, it says Aurora A3 Mag Pro, but really big on the side, EDC flashlight. So I don't know, maybe they could have put that there bigger. Anyway. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much that. So yeah, very cool uh, Going Gear Club. I'm always a fan of what they send. I don't think I've ever really been super disappointed. It's just like some things are more exciting than others. But let's, uh, let's line these up here. Very cool knife, very cool light. And another very cool knife. You guys let me know if you EDC one of these style uh, Victorinox knives. I, like I said, I've had several of these. I've EDC'd it for a little bit. Um, I don't generally do folders in a pouch. I don't mind having like a fixed blade on the side occasionally, but as far as my actual side, if I go with a pouch, I go with a full-size multi-tool. Even though this is a multi-tool, it's mostly knife. And I don't have a problem with that so much, but if I'm carrying a pouch, I want all those other tools, like something I'll get in a Victorinox, you know, dedicated multi-tool, or I should say a plier multi-tool, because that's this is a multi-tool, but it's not a plier uh, based multi-tool, which when you say MT or multi-tools, that's what I think of. I think of mainly pliers with other stuff, whereas this mainly a knife with some other stuff. Um, but yeah, so when I do EDC these, it's not for very long because I'm just not into having the bat belt. And as you guys know, most of you know, I carry so much stuff. I can't just have a million things all around my waist. I have, you know, my pockets are weighed down. You know, I have some kind of firearm on me, and like I said, lately I've had, um, almost every day I've had a, a full-size multi-tool in a pouch. But I can't have a pouch and a pouch and a pouch, and, you know, it's just, it becomes too much. Even for me, if you can believe that. So, yeah. But anyway, there you go. Very cool month. I dig the stuff. I think it's awesome. So, yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.